Hola, hola, hola. Yo soy Elizabeth Matern, la abogada de inmigración en el sur de Georgia. Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth Matern, immigration lawyer in South Georgia. Cook Baxter is here today live for our two o'clock Facebook Live. We're going to give people a few minutes to join, but um, today's topic is going to be um, fighting for people who are detained in ICE detention. So I'm going to do mostly in English. I'll do a little bit in Spanish. Um, bear with me with my Spanish. Um, hola. Hola. Hola, William. Bienvenidos. Yo soy Elizabeth Mathern, la abogada de inmigración en el sur de Georgia. Vamos a hablar hoy um, la, sobre la tema um, luchando por las personas. Hola. Um, que están detenido en, en, o en custodia de ICE, custodia de ICE en Georgia. Hola. Bienvenidos. Esperamos un poquito más para más personas venir. Um, we, in South Georgia, we had a tornado yesterday. Everything's fine at the office, but Adel, where we're located, where our South Georgia office is located, um, had some damage. Everybody's fine. Um, I will be taking questions. If you have any questions in general or you want to, hola. Bienvenidos. Or if you want to um, to give us a call, our number is 404-816-8611. Um, today we're going to be talking about representing um, people that are in ICE detention and fighting for them. I want to give you an update about what's going on. Um, a lot of people are super worried about the coronavirus. Um, you know, people who are not detained are terrified of the coronavirus. Um, people who are, who have loved ones detained are especially, especially um, scared right now. Si el número de teléfono es 404 416-8611. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll, let's see, we'll wait for a couple people to join. And um, again, my name is Elizabeth Mathern with Cook Baxter Immigration. I am in the South Georgia office. I am in Adel, Georgia, and I do a lot of detained work, but we also do family-based petitions, naturalizations, anything really, you name it, we do it. But today I wanna to talk to you about um, Representing people who are detained in Stewart, Folkston, and Irwin are the primary detention centers that we serve. Um, when we don't have the coronavirus, I, I go around to them pretty frequently. I'm in Stewart at least once a week. Um, okay, so let's talk about the virus and what's happening in the detention centers. Um, right now, ICE has told they posted last week on their Facebook page or on their um, website that they're no longer going to be releasing anyone. Um, that they, they've done all the releases that they're gonna do as far as related to COVID. Um, it's really interesting because people are asking for release every day and health conditions are changing every day, etc. cetera. Um, there were several um, class action lawsuits that were in the works they were in the federal courts of the middle district and the southern district. Um, we had some clients included in, in the class action. Unfortunately, the federal judges denied both of those petitions. Um, and, and we didn't get the results we wanted. So we were hoping that people were going to be released. Um, the main focus of those class action lawsuits was related to people with high risk, um, high risk conditions that made them high risk for the COVID. Um, and 
unfortunately, ICE presented to the federal judges that they were doing everything possible to protect people, and the federal judges pretty much bought that. Um, what does that mean for you? What does that mean for your loved ones? What we're telling people is that it's very important for your loved one who is detained to record the conditions they're experiencing and to let their family members or their lawyer know about those conditions. Um, if your loved one has any, is experiencing any symptoms at all, you need to tell them to write a medical request form and keep a copy of it. So basically do two medical request forms, put one in the box, put the other one in their private papers. And that's so that we can have a record of how many times someone has requested medical care and sort of elevate that request through, through the channels and ICE. Um, another thing that is really interesting is that um, they told the federal judges, or one of the federal judges wrote in his order that detainees are similarly situated to everyone else outside, that we're all in danger of um, catching the virus in some way or another. Um, that doesn't make a lot of sense to us, but it's, it's unfortunate. And at this point, um, the governor has opened things back up in Georgia. And so we think it's going to be increasingly difficult to gain any traction on these habeas cases. But that doesn't mean we're not going to keep trying. We're watching all of the habeas cases nationwide. Um, we're tracking them. We're watching what's happening. We're, we're watching the pleadings. And we're brainstorming among ourselves. We also do direct advocacy with ICE. You know, we call ICE, I call ICE almost every day. Somebody in our firm is speaking to ICE almost every day. Um, if conditions change, we update ICE. If we hear that someone um, has a fever and a cough and all of that, we will ask for their detention to be reviewed. Um, I want to update you that there was um, a what we call a TRO granted. It's a nationwide injunction out in California, but um, unfortunately, it's not. It wasn't the result that, that I would have hoped for, which was release a bunch of people. What the judge said in that case was for ICE to um, review their list of detention for everyone who is high risk and to re-review whether or not they could release them. Um, what we're seeing related to releases, I know there was a rumor a while back about where um, there was going to be like two or 300 people released from Stewart. Um, we don't think that's going to happen, and we don't think it did happen. Um, the way we see ICE reviewing detention requests is whether or not people have any criminal history. And the way they're analyzing that at this point is much more strict than we've seen in the past. So really, I think if, if you have more than a couple of DUIs um, or you're subject to mandatory detention, even if you have high risk or conditions that medical conditions that make you high risk at this point they're not they're not releasing people just for that um, so so how does that relate to you your loved one in your case so um, I think it that relates to your your potential situation or your loved one's situation in a couple of ways one way is don't don't think that it's just as simple as maybe a phone call. If you just hire a lawyer, pay them thousands of dollars to ask them to ICE to release, it's probably not going to happen at this point unless things change in the detention centers or we get some sort of injunction in the federal courts. Um, another piece of information, immigration judges cannot release people simply because um, of, of a virus or a health um, scare. Unfortunately, if someone's subject to mandatory detention, an immigration judge doesn't have the power to release them. Um, let's see, somebody says they can't hear. Let me see if I can turn up my volume. Can you hear me better, Pierre? Let me know. Thank you for that feedback. I hope y'all can hear me. Um, and Oh, William, you didn't get the phone number? We'll post the phone number in the comments in just a minute, okay? Sorry about that. You can't hear me? Hmm. 
Looks like my volume's all the way up. Can you check your volume on your end? Is anyone else having trouble hearing me? Please let me know in the comments. That'd be great. Um, so what I was saying was immigration judges don't have the power to... I can talk louder. Immigration judges don't have the power to just release people for any reason. Or if they're subject to mandatory detention, mean they have certain criminal convictions or they entered the country in a certain way, like they're classified as an arriving alien. An immigration does, judge doesn't have any power to release you on bond. So um, be careful in who you hire to file a bond motion for you, especially if, if the only legal strategy is filing a bond motion based on COVID. Um, thank you, Jenny. Um, I'm glad you can hear me just fine. Um, all right. Another thing um, that's important for you to know is that um, ICE does have the power to release anybody. And so we've just got to keep making those records of medical situations. If your loved one has a medical condition, you need to make sure you have medical documents related to that. And the loved one that's detained needs to make sure they are requesting medical care in writing and doing it every single day. Now I know a lot of people um, are worried that they, um, they don't get any responses and so they don't keep filling out the, the requests, but it's really important that you request medical care every single day. Another thing we hear from people, a lot of uh, a question we hear is, um, but what if I have a sponsor? Can a sponsor get me out of detention? That doesn't seem to be a highly relevant factor at this moment with ICE. Um, most important is going to be someone's criminal history from what I'm seeing. And um, I want to talk a little bit more about bond. Going back to what I was saying, how an immigration judge only has the power to release you under certain um, situations. The immigration judge also has to look at whether or not you're a flight risk or a danger to the community. That's legal jargon, and that just means that there are certain elements that the judge has to review. So you need to show that you're eligible for an application. So if you're not eligible for any applications and your legal, your legal strategy for bond is just because you're afraid of the coronavirus, I'm afraid that's not going to be a very strong strategy. Um, I know that there are judges who are moving bond hearings faster and maybe being a little bit more friendly regarding bond requests, but they're still requiring that those legal elements and, and legal arguments be made. Um, other judges are not being any more friendly, um, are still being very, very difficult. You know, it's very difficult to get bond in the Georgia immigration courts, Stewart and Atlanta. Um, another point is if you um, were hoping to get out on co because of the COVID scare, it's really important that you or your loved ones are thinking about um, your case in a bigger perspective. Are you going to, if you, you're going to have to stay detained, even people who are um, being ordered removed or get voluntary departure are not necessarily being taken out of the detention centers right now. Um, are you going to fight your case while you're detained? And so that's where you really need to speak with a qualified immigration lawyer who does a lot of deportation defense, who can advise you on whether or not you have, um, you're eligible for an application and whether or not you have a strong case, especially knowing the judges and knowing these courts. Um, another question that we get a lot is, um, what if someone contracts COVID while they're detained? Um, that is a very scary situation. And unfortunately, we've, uh, we do know that there are positive cases in Stuart Irwin. I don't think we've heard of any positive confirmed cases in Folkestone yet. Um, but it appears that that alone is not enough for someone to be released. Um, I would still keep, you know, documenting everything. Um, if you are concerned about your, your loved one, you haven't heard from them for a few days, you can call the detention center um, and ask that, 
you know, a well check be performed, or you can look them up in the detain, ICE detainee locator, which you can Google that. I'll try to post it in the comments once, once I'm off um, live. Um, you can look in the detainee locator to see where their location is. Um, you know, ICE is representing to federal judges that they're giving people perfectly fine health care. So it's really important that we're communicating with each other um, and getting the information of what's really happening in the detention centers. I am, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I um, am glad to have so many people watching. It's really wonderful. And I am happy to talk about anything you guys would like to hear more about. Um, let's see, the, if you're interested in looking up the na nationwide injunction that was um, issued April 20th, that um, is called the Fair Hat case, F-A-I-R-H-A-T. And like I said, that injunction is a big victory. It's a nationwide victory. Um, and what, it, what the judge said in that case is it ordered ICE to immediately track and ID vulnerable individuals in the detention centers. Hi, good to see you. Uh, thank you for joining. And for ICE to re-review if they've already reviewed and reviewed custody and reviewed the people's custody. Um, there is um, something that we can submit, a request for a review of custody um, for people who who are vulnerable, who do have high risk underlying conditions, and um, but in, at this point, unless something changes um, or we see some indications that ICE is going to shift how they are analyzing cases, I think that they um, they take it as that they're done. And if someone has any sort of criminal history, more than a single DUI or traffic offenses, um, or they're an arriving alien, I, it doesn't seem like the ICE officers in Georgia are releasing those people, regardless of how severe their medical conditions are. Okay, we have a question. It's in, in Espanol. Um, si una persona está detenida en su vida voluntaria, no se puede hacer nada. Para sacarlo. No, generalmente no, um, porque si una persona está detenida, um, salida voluntaria solamente es uh, um, de el centro de detención a el avión y no hay no hay una, una oportun oportunidad para salir in, in in a veces, um, muchos años en pasado, si podemos, pre um, we could ask for uh, what's called voluntary departure bond, but now it's very, very hard to get, um, especially if they've already been given voluntary departure. And for the English speakers who are listening, she's asking if, if there's any way that if a person's detained, and they're already given voluntary departure, is there any way to um, get them out? And the answer to that is generally no, generally no. Um, there is an application called voluntary departure bond, which um, allows a person to be released on the amount of money, given a certain amount of days to gather their belongings and leave on time. That was something that was occasionally used in very, um, unique cases uh, many years ago, but I haven't seen it used um, in this administration. I haven't seen it used in a really long time. So, disafortunately, no, Marilana. Um, good question, though. Thank you. Thank you for asking the question. Um, okay, let me see. Let me think of the, if there's anything else I wanted to tell you guys about uh, representing detained people. Um, okay, de nada. Um, I think that, like I said earlier, if you weren't watching or if you just joined us, I'll introduce myself again. My name is Elizabeth Mathern. I am an uh, immigration lawyer in South Georgia. I, for Cook Baxter Immigration, I, I run their South Georgia office. I'm so happy to be with you guys today talking about um, representing detained people 
in Georgia um, ICE detention. And we're mostly focusing on how is this um, COVID-19 virus affecting people? What sort of movement are we seeing on getting people released based on that alone? Um, talking about the federal cases that have been happening and um, a pretty big federal victory out in California. Um, so there was a huge rumor that two to 300 people were going to be released from Stewart. Probably about a month ago, this rumor was flying around. I don't think that happened. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, ICE has said um, in one of the federal hearings that they were taking certain steps, which was to release the people they could, um, sending some detainees to other locations, and um, also um, continuing removals and voluntary departures where they could. So not taking any new detainees into certain detention centers, spacing people out, things like that. Um, we have seen that some countries have said they're closing the border. You know, you probably saw new news coverage of Guatemala um, saying that one plane carried 75% positive um, COVID-19 passengers um, coming from the U.S. being removed. Uh, so some countries are putting their foot down. We're not, we're not getting a ton of feedback from ICE about if, when people are being moved or not, but I do know that people watch the airport um, there in Columbus and tell us that removals are still taking place. Um, but for some countries, they're taking a long time. Uh, also, you know, we had a big medical, uh, I'm sorry, nationwide injunction by a judge out in California that only told the ICE to do two things, which was to review their people who were detained to see if um, they had people in custody with high risk medical conditions and then to review the, those people for release. It didn't order certain people to be released, etc. So um, I think that is great. It enables us to draft a letter with that injunction, but I don't think we have much, um, much positivity that that's forcing ICE to let people out. And so I think that's an important part of the conversation. All right, we've got a few questions. Thank you so much for asking questions. Um, if someone leaves the U.S. voluntarily and would like to enter the U.S. again with a petition from their child, could they? They, if they've been in Mexico for more than 10 years. Okay, this is a question we get a lot. So if someone leaves the U.S. on a voluntary departure and they want to re-enter um, with a petition, like their U.S. US citizen child turns 21 and petitions for them, yeah, a voluntary departure does not create a um, bar to, to re-entering legally. But it's very important that they don't re-enter um, because then they'll face severe penalties. So yes, they could um, subsequently be petitioned for by a child. And that's one of the benefits of a voluntary departure. There aren't, it doesn't have a ton of benefits, but it does give you the opportunity to um, leave without a removal order. And a removal order can be a bar to re-entering. It it's a waivable bar, but it can give you one more thing you have to deal with. Um, if they've been in Mexico for, for 10 or more years. So the other thing that's always at play here is whether or not they, um, they accumulated or they were here without status or, or with unlawful presence is what we call it for more than six months or a year. That unlawful presence will also result in a bar that needs to be taken care of, okay? So just because somebody left with a voluntary departure Please um, make sure that you consult with a, a good immigration lawyer. You also need to double check the person's, all the person's history and lots of things just to make sure there's no other bars to them being able to adjust because that's a wonderful thing when someone is able to adjust their status based on their child's petition. Okay, let's see. I have another. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, let's say someone is detained with an approved petition through an immediate relative 
and is in the process of trying to gain residency with no criminal background. How likely would that person be able to receive a bond and complete their process? Okay, that's a great question. Um, generally, someone who's been here in the U.S. with no criminal history and has an ability to adjust their status would be um, a good candidate for bond. So we'd be able to show that they have a qualifying relative, we'd be able to show a, a good history at an address for a long time, like bills and stuff like that. So um, we're mitigating flight risk. I think someone like that would have a great opportunity at getting bond. The only time it gets weird is if that person um, just showed up at the airport or something and were classified as an arriving alien. Then we, we're getting a little bit more tricky as far as whether or not somebody could get um, a bond. Arriving aliens are not eligible for bonds. So great question. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much for those questions. Um, there was another thing that I wanted to mention um, related to some very new news. But go ahead and ask me more questions. If anybody else has questions, feel free. Um, and again, I'll just repeat who I am and our phone number, um, just in case you missed it. Our phone number is 404-816-8611. My name is Elizabeth Mathurin with Cook Baxter Immigration. I'm in South Georgia. Um, I am in Adel, and I go to all three of the detention centers, Folkston, Stewart, Irwin, um, the detention centers here in Georgia usually have um, people from the Carolinas and Georgia and the border so we've got people from everywhere if you have a family member who's detained and sent to ICE detention in Georgia um, they could go to any one of those three detention centers we also have another detention center called Robert A. Dayton and that is a um, federal federal prison or federal detention center that also houses um, some immigration detainees. Irwin is where most of the women are taken. Uh, Folkston and Stewart um, have only men. All right, let's see. We've got a question from Danielle. My husband is in Stewart waiting on a court for bond with no criminal charges. Will he be able to get a bond? Um, he's been here since he was four years old. That is, okay, Danielle, that brings up a good question. I um, spoke a little bit earlier, maybe before you joined, but it's great to repeat because this is always important information. An immigration judge has to look at a few things when they analyze whether or not somebody will be released on bond, okay? Um, one is, are they a flight risk? And that we're going to show that they're not by how long they've lived here, what number of um, family members they have with status. Um, we can show bills and um, even pictures and things like that. His school records would help to corroborate that he's been here since he was four. We also look at like w what number of family members do they have with status. Um, if they've got children, a spouse, um, you know, and when I say with status, that could mean uh, a citizen or a green card holder. DACA, family members with DACA also is a positive, um, but it doesn't always create what we call a qualifying relative for a petition. And that brings me to my next point. You need to prove that you're eligible for some petition. So just because you've been here a really long time and you um, don't have any criminal history, doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get a bond. Um, you need to show that you're eligible for to apply for an application in front of the immigration judge. Sometimes the only application someone's eligible for is voluntary departure. Um, that is an application and you can try to ask for a bond if you're only eligible for voluntary departure. But the judges sometimes say, if I can give you voluntary departure, and voluntary departure can be straight from the detention center, why would I let you leave the detention center? And that's such a disappointment. But um, occasionally, a judge on the right day um, with the right um, prosecuting attorney might give a bond. 
So we would talk about the pros and the cons and we'd make a decision whether we wanted to take that risk. Um, but if someone's eligible for cancellation of removal, just adjustment of status, asylum, other applications that the judge would then be able to make a decision on in their merits case or their, their main case, that's how we mitigate the flight risk. That's how we show that they have skin in the game or a reason to like come back to court and fight for their ability to stay here legally. So I guess the answer is a perfect lawyer answer is it depends, um, Danielle. And I'd love to talk to you more about that if you'd like to talk to us about bond. Um, 404-816-8611. We are running, um, April is almost over, but we are doing, because of everything that's been going on recently, we are doing free consultations through the month of April. So if you would like to make an appointment to discuss um, discuss your case, please feel free to contact us. Um, Vieda, uh, how would one go about making an appointment? Yes, ma'am. So you can call our, our number, 404-816-8611. We'd be happy to make an appointment with you. Right now, the office um, is trying to do most of our appointments over the phone or Skype or even FaceTime. So if you, um, or WhatsApp. So if you would like to schedule a consultation with us, please feel free to call the main office at 404-816-8611. I'll say it in Spanish too. Cuatro cero, cuatro ocho uno seis, ocho seis uno uno. Um, and we will be happy to, to have an appointment with you. Hopefully once the virus um, passes a little bit more and we continue to see things on the decline, and things start opening back up, we will let you know, you know, check our Facebook page um, consistently. We'll let you know as soon as we're taking in-person appointments again. But you know, technology is a wonderful, marvelous thing. And I feel like we're able to do um, consultations just as easily, especially if you want to see our face and you want to see your face through, you know, FaceTime or, um, Skype, WhatsApp, all those different things uh, have video chats. So feel free to give us a call and make an appointment. Um, gosh, I could talk about bond all day. I don't even know. It's one of my favorite things to do. I mean, we we say like reuniting a family is one of the best things to ever be a part of. There's no greater reward in life than helping a family stay together. So we love being a part of that. And um, thank you so much for joining me today on Facebook, um, on our Facebook Live. This is Elizabeth Mathern with Cook Baxter Immigration. Um, I've appreciated all your questions. They have been really great. And for all those people who have been watching, thank you so much. Um, I'm in South Georgia, in our South Georgia office. I'll give you that number too in case you'd like to call me directly. And the number there is 229-472-5758. That is 472 Um what is it? No, it's dos dos nueve. Sorry, dos dos nueve cuatro siete dos cinco siete siete cinco two two nine four seven two five seven seven five, and that's for our Adel office, our South Georgia office. Thanks again, everybody, and I hope you have a great day and you're staying safe and well. And thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye.